Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, so in the last video we saw how to connect to AWS IoT Endpoint uh, using uh, the certificate uh, authentication uh, which was MQTT over TLS and in this video I'm going to show you a simple way to connect uh, to MQTT over WebSocket uh, using AWS Signature for authentication and this uses uh, AWS credentials so I'll, I'll show you how you can do that so to do that uh, let's go ahead and create an IAM user uh, that has the required permissions and we will use those credentials uh, to connect to AWT so let's go to users and let me go ahead and create a user so I'll call it IoT user and we'll have a programmatic access uh, next we need to add permissions uh, so do not add complete permissions uh, you can add uh, the IoT related permission so you can search for IoT and there should be an IoT uh, data access uh, so this policy gives full access to AWS IoT messaging actions now uh, this is again uh, something that is not recommended because it essentially gives you access complete access to connect publish subscribe to all topics uh, and all devices and all things which is not correct so to have a fine grain uh, policy uh, you can tune this to have a resource specific to each of the action like you want to publish to a particular to topic or you want to subscribe to a particular topic then you can do that and that will be similar to the policy that we defined here so if you see uh, the policy that we uh, defined for IOT policy uh, you can do exactly something like this like connect uh, think client one and then publish on topic one uh, but this is uh, more of a generic policy uh, that gives the complete access. So for this video I'm going to uh, use this policy but you should ideally create a new policy and fine tune this uh, to have this in your production setup. So uh, let's go ahead and select next tag, uh, select review and okay so it looks like it did not uh, set the policy so let's go ahead and select that and select next tags and you can see it gives complete access to IOT and let's click on create user now we would use this uh, credentials to connect and uh, this is the secret access key now this is something that is very crucial you should never share this credentials with anyone and uh, do not bother uh, reusing this because I would be deleting this user uh, when when I, I'm done recording this video so uh, never ever share this credentials to anyone never ever check it in into any of the github repository because these are extremely uh, crucial and confidential so uh, let's go back to our code so this is the code that we saw uh, in the last video so this is the MQTT client that we created using the certificate so in this video I'm going to use the sig v4 auth so let's go back to our repo and let's use the sig uh, signature v4 type. so uh, let's go ahead and try to use this code uh, which is essentially this so you can see it uses client ID uh, secret ID and access key and session token uh, we essentially don't need session token in this case but if you use uh, credentials from Cognito then we would need this but let's go ahead and copy this to our code and see what happens so uh, we do not need session token so let's go ahead and get rid of that we do need access key and secret access key so let's go back to our code uh, or the IAM portal where we have the access key so let's go ahead and replace our access key and replace our secret access key and uh, that's it so this will use uh, MQTT over WebSocket uh, using uh, SIG v4 version to authenticate and uh, rest of the code remains the same so instead of using certificate now we are using credentials so let's go ahead and try to run this and this should work fine so you can see it connected and you can see it, it received the message as well now you can do uh, the test again like I showed in the last uh, video you can go to uh, you can do a test here you can again do a topic one and uh, you can subscribe to this topic and since this is already running let's publish this and you can see it, it comes here and if you try to run this again uh, you can see that uh, there is a message that is going to come here right so there we go uh, but important thing to notice is that if I change uh, this to any other thing it will still work and because we are seeing that it uh, it will basically publish to any topic so for example let's say I, I 
terminate this and I change this to topic 2 and uh, let me go ahead and change this to so let's remove this and I will change this to topic 2 and I'll say subscribe to this topic and let's go ahead and run it one more time so this should again work and uh, there we go you can see hello world 123 hello world 123 you can publish to this topic uh, it got published you can see it here as well now this setup would have failed in our previous scenario because uh, if you see our policy which is under secure and policies uh, this we we had restricted it to topic one but in in case of this uh, we have we are essentially uh, giving complete access so if you go to uh, our users and if you go to IoT users uh, you can see that it has access to all the resources so uh, as I said uh, this is not a recommended way in production uh, this is just for demo so if you are trying something out uh, this is a quick way to get your hands dirty but you need to fine-tune this based on uh, the exact requirements that you have so uh, I hope that makes sense uh, how to use AWS credentials to uh, do a SIG v4 authentication now uh, the other way to do it is not use this credentials because it's very confidential and you should not uh, directly use those credentials so the uh, ideal way would be to have a user pool uh, have user authenticate using that user pool and then query uh, the identity pool uh, that is based on that user pool to exchange the uh, user pool credentials with an identity pool token uh, which is essentially your uh, temporary AWS credentials that you can use to uh, call AWT services let me go back to an Stack Overflow question which makes it really very clear. So if you have an identity pool which is unauthenticated and if the rule corresponding to the unauthenticated identity pool gives you access to uh, the IoT uh, connection, publish, subscribe, then everything is good. Uh, you should be able to publish and subscribe to uh, the IoT topics, uh, connect to IoT uh, thing and all that stuff. However, if you are using an authenticated pool, then just having a whitelisted policy uh, uh, in the role that corresponds to the authenticated identity pool role is not sufficient so you need two things so one is uh, obviously you need to have those permissions in the authenticated role that corresponds to your identity pool and the second thing that you need is the IOT policy itself which we saw this right so we need to attach this policy to the actual principle and in, in this case it will be the cognito identity principle so if you see it says uh, for uh, authenticated uh, you need you must attach an IOT policy exactly like the ones that are attached to your devices to the cognito identity using attach uh, principle policy API so you can use attach principle policy API uh, to give the, po the policy name that you have and the principle uh, that you have and this should give you access to uh, access AWS IoT uh, resources uh, with the authenticated pool right so just uh, having a authenticated role that gives this complete permission is, is not enough so uh, this is something that I learned the hard way but uh, you know AWS recommends this and there is uh, a, a AWS thread uh, that I found as well where it says you know MQTT connection fails with authenticated cognitive credentials and that's exactly the reason so you first thing is you need uh, those permissions in the identity authenticated role and you also need to attach principal policy uh, with the IoT policy that gives the same set of permissions to the cognito identity that you are using right so uh, that's all for this video uh, let me know if you have any questions thank you